to the Ruderman Roundtable. I'm Senator Russell Ruderman from the Pune and Ka'u districts on the Big Island. And we host the Ruderman Roundtable on various good government and environmental issues here on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock. My guest today is Virginia Beck. Thank you for joining us, Virginia. Thank you, Senator, for having me. Virginia Beck is the legislator, legislature's public access coordinator at the state capitol public access room, or PAR, a division of the nonpartisan Legislative Reference Bureau. She's worked with PAR over the last 10 years in other positions and has additional experience with a variety of government, educational, and nonprofit organizations. Virginia has a master's degree in public administration, has been in Hawaii since 97, and enjoys her role assisting people to effectively add their voices to the legislative process. Uh, Virginia, let's start from the beginning. Tell me, what is the public access room? Well, the public access room is really one of the first stops for citizens wanting to participate in the state legislative process. Um, you know, in a democracy, power is vested in the people, and the legislature decided that in order for people to use that power, they needed the resources to do so. So we provide physical resources. We actually have an office, room 401, with computers and workspace and all kinds of handouts for people to use, as well as the intellectual resources people need. They need to understand how the process works in order to add their voice to that process. So we're happy to help people with those resources. So your office is a good place for somebody to start if they don't know how to begin, so Ex to speak? Exactly, exactly. We, we help people who are very new to the process, don't even understand how government is structured. Um, we also help seasoned advocates and lobbyists who have been at the legislature year after year who have more complicated questions. Interesting. Does every state have a public access room or equivalent? No, we're lucky we live Hawaii. It's kind of yeah, unique, huh? yeah, it yeah. is. Um, Alaska also has a public um, access office that um, serves their people, but most states have just some of the functions that we um, provide and not such a full service office. Nice. Yeah. How can the interested public use those services? How do they reach you? Well, um, they can pick up the phone and call, 587-0478. Um, That's our phone number. And um, they can email us at par at capital.hawaii.gov. And um, they can also go to our website. Uh, but when they contact us, uh, we're happy to um, help in whatever way we can. Uh, people sometimes start off with us, even if we're not the right office, uh, we do have access to the other resources in the state government. So we're happy to help people, even if it's not directly tied to the legislative process. So we're, we're a very good place for people to start, and we will walk them through understanding um, who their legislators are, or if they're interested in a certain um, issue that's going on at the legislature, we can help them identify specifically what bills are currently active and alive that they might want to add their voice to. Um, sometimes it can be difficult to figure out who has power over a certain piece of legislation at the moment. And so we can help people find that out, give them the contact information, and help them uh, you know, to, to really make their message nice, short and simple, really wins the day at the legislature. So really encouraging them to figure out what it is they're trying to say and then who to say it to. It's nice for me to hear you say short and simple because I think <laughs> that's very true. A lot of times people think, well, I can't write to my legislator unless I have a term paper to back it up right, or something. Right. Really, that's not what we need at all. We want a very short, concise sense of what, what the opinion is. Exactly, exactly. What's the most important piece of advice you can give someone who wants to get involved in trying to influence a bill or a law? Well, number one, to do it. Speak up. And if you feel like you've hit a wall, say you go to the, the Capitol's website, um, capital.hawaii.gov, and you go there and you don't find what you're looking for, don't give up. Call the public access room. We'll help you find what you're looking for. So um, number one, don't give up. Don't give up, Come to you yes. For help you and then, and, and along the same lines, um, be persistent because uh, changing state law does not happen overnight, usually, anyway. Um, it usually takes years to educate legislators about an issue and uh, really get the momentum going to, for change. 
So you do have to be persistent. And if you're, you know, one of the things that, that um, uh, people sometimes do is, is they, they get all excited and are able to testify on a measure and think, okay, that's it, I'm done. Well, if they're lucky and their legislation is moving forward, they're going to be asked to testify on that at least one more time. So um, you do have to be persistent. Meanwhile, it goes from the House to the Senate or the Senate right. to the House. Okay. Right. I see. So it's important for someone not just to testify, but to follow that bill through its process. And exactly, be exactly. And one of the things I want to mention, too, is, is that uh, sometimes people um, think of advocacy for bills being all about testimony, and they skip the one of the one of the important steps you know you you can have talk to a legislator to have a bill introduced which is great um, but then you need to um, ask the committee chair who has control over the bill to actually hear your bill because mm -hmm. if your bill doesn't come forward for a hearing mm -hmm. you don't get the opportunity to testify and it's so frustrating when people call in february and say i'm waiting to testify on my bill and we have to break the news to them that unfortunately, because of legislative deadlines, they're a little bit too late and they should have spoken to the chair and asked for that bill to be heard. So you can help people with understanding those deadlines and processes yes, as well. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So right, it's not obvious, yeah. And things happen quickly, as you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Tommy, why, why do you think more people are not involved in the le testifying or advocating at the legislature? Well, I think there are a couple of reasons. You know, one is um, lack of knowledge of how easy it is to do it. You know, I think once uh, people have their eyes opened to how they can add their voice and how easy it is to do so, um, they really wake up to this whole new realm, and it's, it's quite wonderful to see. Um, I think there's also some cynicism as to, you know, oh, I'm one voice, what am I going to do? Is it really going to make a difference? And um, what I can say to them is that because so few people do speak up, your voice is all the more valuable right. and listened to. And, you know, I, I know that in working in the building, one of the things that I've noticed is, you know, um, that the legislators do pay attention to what people say. It does not mean that they'll do what people say, but they do pay attention to the voices that are raised. Mm -hmm. Do you think, uh, what do you think about when the testimony can be either written or oral in person? Do you think one's better than the other? Are they both important? Is one more effective? Well, I think they're both important. The written testimony, the nice thing is it becomes part of the writ written record. Mm -hmm. So when people are looking at the legislative history of a bill um, or of an issue that's you know, attempted to become law, we've got that in writing so we know what you, your thoughts were um, and people can refer to that. On the other hand, oral testimony is, has quite a bit of impact. You know, just showing up mm -hmm. at a hearing um, there's something undeniable about that impact with a legislator. Yeah. yeah. In, in either case, you know, if um, one of the things that can help you with, with testimony is if people can make it personal and put a small story yeah. in there, um, that can really grab some attention. Um, the trick is to have the story but still be short and simple, you know, um, so not to go into a long saga of your experience, but just short and simple who you are, where you're coming from, how this legislation would affect you. What do you think could be done that would to encourage more people to be involved? What could we do differently? Well, um, it's, it's hard for me to say because uh, I do have to be very careful. I'm in a nonpartisan office, mm -hmm. and so um, I am not affiliated with any political party, and I don't take a stance on any issues. Um, but there are you know, some, some people who say, well, maybe a longer legislative session would give people more time to actually offer the testimony, because the deadlines are very, very oh, short for offer, offering the testimony. Um, so I think, you know, getting the word out on how easy it is to testify would be helpful. Um, as you know, I think we were talking about earlier, the, um, the effort to have remote testimony, um, video testimony, um, would be helpful for our neighbor island residents, mm -hmm. certainly. Yeah, it's something that, being from the Big Island, we hear about that all the time. You can actually do video testi testimony even at our county council. Right. And you're telling me the same thing's true in Maui, and yet we can't do it at a state level when 
the obstacles are much, much greater to, to being there in person. Right. Um, so I hope one day that my fellow legislators will, will value Outer Island testimony and, yes. and make that easier to happen. There, there has been a um, trial, uh, mm -hmm. you know, little thing well, going one on. Hearing room one has, hearing room, right, right and a certain uh, committee, yeah. but... Do you think people know that that's available? I don't know that they yeah. really do. Right. Um, yeah. Because when I go to the neighbor islands, it's one of the things that I hear people asking for. And um, so. What do you think it would take to make that happen? Well, I guess uh, <laughs> 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 leadership. I, I, I guess it would, would take you know legislative leadership to get behind the idea okay. uh, to really make it happen. You mentioned going out into the communities. I know you're coming over to the Big Island next week, I believe, for a series of public access room workshops. Is that right, correct? Right, right. We'll actually be um, over in um, oh, Kailua. This week, yeah, yeah this week. Uh, we'll be in uh, uh, Kailua Kona and Waimea um, Wednesday and Thursday, the 12th and the 13th. And uh, then next week, we'll be on the other side of the island, Volcano. And and you do this around the state, is that correct? You do these right. workshops around the state? Right. Each, can, each is that on your website? Can people find out what it is? It is. It is. And our website is um, LRB. We're a part of the Legislative Reference Bureau, okay. which is a nonpartisan uh, um, office at the legislature. So it's lrbhawaii.org and then slash PAR. And uh, just go to the workshops page and there'll be all the information you need. Or just give us a call. You know, I am, I'm so happy that you do those workshops. I, I attended one of them when I was a freshman legislate, legislator, and I must say I learned more mm -hmm. from your predecessor, uh, Susan Marinelli, doing one of these community workshops. I wor learned more in that hour and a half than in my <laughs> whole life's education up to that point oh, combined. Yeah. And I, saw, I still I go back to them usually at least once each year because I like to encourage my constituents to attend right. and also to just to be a voice to say, you're learning something really valuable here. Right. And this is the key between being able to influence the state legislature versus not. And right. They're so informative. I remember one um, example you gave of the bicycle helmet bill. I don't know if you still right. use that right. one, but it was, it was, it was, it was humorous <laughs> and educational. Right. And very, very reality-based. Yeah. I, I loved it. So I may show up at one of your workshops. Okay. But That's wherever great. you are around the state, you might want to attend one of the public access rooms workshops when they come to your neighborhood. I highly encourage it. I think of the public access room as being like the librarian for the state legislature, a place where people go when they're lost and don't know where to begin. Do you think that's a fair uh, analogy? Or well, yeah, we're we're um, it works as far as being the, the first stop and being like going to the reference librarian to say. Where do I start? Mm -hmm. uh, but we do also, sometimes we'll direct people to the actual library we have in the state capitol. We have the Le Legislative Reference Bureau Library. Oh, so sometimes if uh, somebody called today and was asking very complicated questions about uh, Hawaii administrative rules and all the sorts of, of history lessons on that and got beyond me, so I referred them down to the library. So. And there's somebody down there to help also at the library? Yeah, just the, yeah. Oh, so yeah. we've got research library librarians library. down there. Yeah. yeah, so they really help a lot with people who are researching legislative history. Okay, we're going to take a short break. I'm here with Virginia Beck from the State Legislature Public Access Room here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'll be back in a moment. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I serve as Senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on Think Tech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, I'm Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist here in Hawaii, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, which is on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock. Have a great summit. Take care of your mental health.
Aloha, welcome back to the Ruderman Roundtable on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm here today with Virginia Beck from the Public Access Room, the, the organization that helps citizens navigate the legislative process. So tell me, um, Virginia, now here we are in October, the legislature gets started in January. Right. Is this a good time to get involved in the legislative process or should somebody wait until January? Oh no, don't wait until January. Don't wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why, why not? If, well, if you have an idea for um, a bill, an idea for a law, now would be a great time to be talking to legislators who will then turn to their research agencies and actually draft the idea into a bill. Mm -hmm. So um, now through January is a great time to be talking with folks. Nice. Tell me, you do some broadcasting within the from the public access room. Could you tell me about that? Sure. Yeah, the legislative broadcast project is uh, coordinated by the public access room. So we're the office that tries to figure out which hearings and uh, sessions to actually broadcast, and those go out to the Peg Access channels. Uh, so on the Big Island, they would be on the Neleo station, and. Um, that's a great way for, you know, they're all closed captioned and it's, um, if you miss the live broadcast, they're all accessible on the legislature's website. website. So you're broadcasting actual legislative hearings there? Right, right, Honestly. right. And so if, especially on the neighbor islands, if there are hearings that are happening that are of great interest to neighbor island residents, they can call the public access room and say, hey, you know, we'd really like to see this one. Mm -hmm. um, and we can go ahead and, and make arrangements. I must admit, I did not know about that. I'm oh, so okay. glad you're talking about Good. it. We'll have to take advantage Good. of it more. Yeah. Um, You'd mentioned before that the public access room is not partisan, right. nonpartisan, I should say. Tell me about that. Uh, so, who who pays for LRB in the public access room? Well, we are funded by your tax dollars. Okay. I think we're one of the really good uses of your tax dollars. Okay. And um, so we're funded um, each year. We're in the statutes that there is the public access room that's available for citizens as a resource to the legislature, and. Um, and w it's, it's really interesting to see people, you know, in our office we have computers that people can use and workspace and all kinds of things. And, and we will have, um, even when things are very markedly um, divided on a popular issue, we'll have people from uh, both sides of an issue working side by side in the office. And we, we kind of think of ourselves as a little bit of a place of refuge in the building mm -hmm. because we're all about the process rather than the policy. So we're all about how the bill becomes a law, how you can access the power in the moment, um, and not whether or not it's a good idea as far as the policy goes. That's up to you guys. Is it hard sometimes? Do you find it difficult to stay neutral? Do you find yourself wanting to advocate for one side or another but well, not able to? Well, yes. There, there are days where, where you, you feel like you've got a bloody tongue, you know? <laughs> you bite your tongue too but, much. Uh, yeah. but, but it actually, I love it because, you know, it, we really do encourage everyone to add their voices because I do think that's what makes the best laws, you know? If we can have people from a variety of viewpoints offer their 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 take on things, that's when we can really make the best laws. So we've really thought it through and, and uh, looked at it from a number of different perspectives. Mm. So I think that's important. Interesting. I want to go back to something we talked about earlier. You'd mentioned that one possible way to uh, have more involvement w would be if the session was longer, that would give people more time to mm. submit testimony. Um, is the problem the length of the session or is it the amount of notice before it, bef when a hearing is noticed, we have typically 30, uh, 72, or sometimes 48 hours. Right, right. And that's the period during which you, we accept testimony. Really, right. right, and usually they say, we want your testimony um, 24 okay, hours in advance yes. of the hearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that would be another place that some people would say, um, maybe if you made that longer. Um, now, there are also people who say, don't make the legislative session any longer, you know, they, <laughs> they come you know, too, right? so um, all of these things can yeah. be looked at from a number of different points of view. Because I think, I would think that the challenge is finding that very brief time slot during which you can submit 
useful legal testimony. Right. And the whole year you can have your opinion, and then there's a 24-hour or 48-hour window when that opinion can be testimony for exactly. a bill. Exactly. And if you don't, oh, if you don't know, if you're not tuned in, and you have got a warning that this is happening now, then it's like you said, I've been waiting for this bill to come up and it didn't happen, or my right. window of testimony is open. Is there anything the legislature could do to make? that more well uh, apparent? yeah well they have made some some great changes you yeah. know on the website you can sign up for um, for hearing notices so if there are bills that you want to make sure you don't miss a chance to offer testimony on mm -hmm. um, it's very simple and we can guide people through the process to go in and sign up for hearing notices by email you can also do that for entire committees so say I was interested in education issues I could sign up so that I would um, receive a hearing, all of the hearing notices that come out of the education committees. And I could look them over and see if there's anything that might um, interest me in, in offering my testimony. So they've done that. That makes things a lot easier. Um, they've also set up a web tracking, uh, measure tracking system so that you can make a list of bills and with just the, a couple clicks, be able to see what the status of all of your bills are and what's most recently had some activity. Mm -hmm. So we help people with uh, getting those tools in their toolbox. So is it, what's that process called when someone signs up to get notification? I mean, do we have a name for that? They want to follow a subject matter, a committee, or a subject or a specific bill? We call that signing up for email. Email us and then we'll yeah, get signing up for hearing notices. I see. Yeah, and there's actually a button on the the website to sign up for hearing notices. Yeah. And you can sign up for to be notified on a specific bill on a committee's right. actions. Well, can you can you let's say I'm interested in. Uh, you can sign up for all of them if you want. <laughs> well, let's say you're interested in a subject matter, and I don't know what bills might be introduced next mm. year. Let's say I'm interested in knowing what happens with electric car legislation next week. Can I sign up for... Yeah, unfortunately we can't, we don't have it um, so that by keyword key you word. could, you could um, do that, but we could help you find, using the keywords, we could help you find the legislation that you would be interested in. Oh, I see. And so, so we do have people calling the public access room and saying, I'm interested in electric car legislation, help me find the bills. And then and you would guide them through the process of finding the bills by the keyword search, and then they can sign up for the exactly. notices exactly. For, for those yep. bills. Uh -huh. yep. um, what, what do you think about contacting legislators during the rest of the year versus testimony when a bill is in front of them? When is it best to talk to the legislature, legislator during downtime, let's say, versus crunch time. Well, see now, <laughs> Senator, this is one of the questions I was going to ask you about. Oh, okay. But um, I do think that um, a lot of um, what happens at the legislature is relationships. And so building relationships with legislators, you know, having a conversation about the issue, I think can certainly be helpful um, to lay that groundwork prior You're to about session. the citizen building the relationship exactly. with their legislators. Exactly. Their relevant legislators. Yeah. So. Yep. Okay, good. Tell me, how does somebody, uh, you mentioned the uh, Public Access Room's website, you've already mentioned that. Is it, it's open to anybody, right? I don't have to be a citizen, I don't have to be a resident, anybody can come and use your services, right? Yep, anybody can come and use the services. And, um, we, we, you know, we, we offer workshops, as, as we were talking about earlier, and, um, you know, they go from the simple, you know, structure of government to understanding some of the odd things that happen at the legislature. You know, one of the odd things that comes to mind, um, there's some odd things that happen frequently, um, such as those um, defective effective dates that mm -hmm. uh, folks put in there, um, where um, some, someone's, legis someone's bill is passed forward with changes, and the change is that it's not effective until January 1, 2099 and citizens will call, call us up and be freaked out a little bit, saying, I thought they said they were in favor, what are they doing? And, yeah. and that's really to force the bill to go to conference committee. And so right. um, that's the kind of thing that if you don't have someone to ask about that kind of thing, um, you can really be at sea. <laughs> yeah. um, do you think there are certain parts of the legislative process that are more 
accessible to the citizens? And I guess the other side of that question, are there some parts of the legislative process that are inaccessible to citizens? Well, you know, the, the part of the legislative process that um, can be frustrating for citizens is the conference committee process. Mm -hmm. uh, so the bill has to go through the House and the Senate, but then we've got to make sure that the exact same version of the bill is adopted by both chambers. And so a conference committee is set up um, and those meetings are open to the public, but um, it's really for legislators to talk to one another. So citizens are left um, trying to lobby different legislators that might have influence over a particular piece of legislation, um, trying to be um, very pointed in what they consider acceptable or unacceptable as far as the versions of the bills, things like that. And that's when um, those relationships are really important, having built those relationships during session mm -hmm. uh, so that you are a trusted advocate and uh, people can really um, look at you and, and uh, know that you know your business and that you know, they should listen to what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other advice to offer our listeners? Well, I don't know. You know, there. Um, I would. I would say. You know, we we touched on it earlier. Of um, you know, get involved and be persistent. And I really think that that is um, so crucial um, because you know this is important business we're doing at the legislature. I mean, it, these are laws that the entire state is going to have to abide by. And. Um, it's such important business that we can't let legislators do it alone. Um, we really need uh, people to, to speak up. Um, it's really frustrating for me when I go to a party and people um, ask where I work and I say at the Capitol and they moan and groan and say, oh, you know, what are they doing? Why are they focused on this and they're not focused on that? And then I get to ask them, well, have you contacted your representative or your senator? And, you know, they're a little sheepish of, no, I haven't. And, you know, I think it's really important for people to speak up and, you know, even if it's not to testify or ask for a particular bill, but even to call their legislator's office and say, this is what I think you need to be focused on. I may not have the answers, but I think this is an important area for you to look at. Um, so. Have you found the legislators are responsive when people do that, generally speaking? Well, I do think that they listen. They you listen, know, they yeah. listen. Um, okay. It's not, doesn't mean, as I said yeah, earlier, that they'll always right. do what mm -hmm. you'll want. I mean, this is a complicated process, and there are a okay. lot of voices that are being raised. And as you know, you're being asked to consider such a wide variety of uh, subjects. So for those of you that want to be more effectively involved in the legislative process, I urge you to take advantage of the many tools that the Public Access Room has to offer you for free for any citizen of Hawaii. And we've been talking with Virginia Beck, the Public Access Coordinator for our State Capitol Public Access Room. Thank you once again for being with us, Virginia. Thank you, Senator. This is uh, Senator Russell Ruderman with the Ruderman Roundtable on Think Tech Hawaii. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.